Hey everybody, I have an Optima HD20 that was sent in for me to look at. Not really sure why it's here. I think it just wasn't working. There's something in it, as you can hear. There's the uh, model number. So, let's find out what that is. First thing we'll do is open the lamp door up. For some reason you've never opened your HD20 in all the years you've owned it, underneath that sticker there will be a screw. Uh, this has obviously been opened before. So these screws are out. Let's open the door up. First thing I always look for on the door is to make sure the tab for the door switch is there and this one is. There's the lamp. Let's get the lamp out. And those two screws and it pulls straight up. There's the lamp. It uses an Osram bulb, 230 watt. I don't believe this is an OEM, being that it doesn't have the sticker, but it has the right bulb. And this bulb looks <coughs> this bulb looks like it's fairly new. I don't see any of the evidence inside of it being well used. But it does have dust, so it was used for a little bit at least. Let's see if we can shake out. And if I gotta take the top off. Now oh, it's close. Let's see if we can get it on the front. Nope. All right. That's fine. Let's take it apart. Zoom you guys back out. First thing, let's take the uh, lens cover off. Put that in the screw bin. And then we have to take the lens off. It just pulls. There's little, little tabs right there. You lock onto these pins, so it just pulls straight out. Then, there's one, one, two, three screws, I believe. Yeah, just three. And let's use this one. We use a number two Phillips. There's one. That one's missing. <laughs> wonder if that's what I heard. Is this one missing too? Nope, that one's in there. Yeah. One. Ah, that one's not sticking. But this one. Yeah, there's nothing. Let's see if I can pop that guy out. There we are. Oh yeah, somebody's been in here. That popped off way too easy. And that goes forward. Oh yeah, keyboard wasn't connected. They said it wasn't on. I'll bet the guy had it open and knocked the keyboard connector loose. Now let's find what's loose in here. What was making that rattling noise? Hmm. That fell out. That's a thread, a brass insert up. Oh. Yeah, let's see if, let's see if I can zoom in on these. So these brass inserts are what the screws go into. So somebody was in here before me. Not the end of the world though, you can see. One goes here, and the other one went here. And being that there's not extra plastic falling out, that tells me that somebody else was in here and took those out. You know, the extra plastic. 
So what I will do is I'm going to see if I can glue that one back in and glue this one back in. This one still has a lot of the, the plastic, so I can probably fix that one. But for testing, let's pop the uh, keyboard out and make sure that this all works. And for this one, I'm using a Zero Phillips. I love this company. They make fantastic tools. There's a keyboard. Don't need these. In fact, let's set that back in there so I don't lose it. And that's actually connected, so we'll leave that in. That'll make it a little easier to work with, too. Here's where the keyboard goes. And there's the keyboard wire. It goes connector side or uh, contact side down so that this little latch pushes it. So it's going to slide it in. Up to the line. And then we're going to push that latch forward. And that holds it. Now the keyboard's connected so we can test it. So first things first. I need to put the uh, lamp door back on to activate the switch. All right, I put the uh, door on and we're gonna try and run it without the lamp first, just to make sure everything comes up. If all the lights are the way I expect, then we'll put a lamp in and see what happens. See, I turned the power on. I'm not getting anything. I'm not getting any standby lights or anything. That's strange. Yeah, we got nothing. Should have something here. And the door is on, so we know that's okay. I'll show you. That door's on. That switch is triggered. I heard it click when I closed it. So, there's something else going on. That means we have to dig in a little further. So first thing I'm going to do is just make 100% sure that door switch, or I should say 1000% sure. So let's take that screw back out and because that tab right there is hitting a switch. Yeah, I can hear it clicking. Just tighten we only need the one but I'll tighten both just in case and the lamp does not need to be in the projector has no way of knowing there's a lamp installed or not on this model until it tries to start it so there's nothing wrong with testing it this way we should still get something here make sure it's not the keyboard wire it doesn't feel like it You know, all of that seems okay. I think there's a power supply issue. So I know one of the complaints was this wouldn't start. And without power, that'll do it. So let's unplug it. I have a suspicion that one of those brass inserts rolled underneath the power supply and may have popped a fuse. So let's take the keyboard off so we don't wreck this wire. I'm going to put this with the top. We're going to take this shield off. Let's 
get that color wheel sense wire out of the way. Now, let's see, we have one more screw over here. Here's the main board. We have to get underneath that. We have to get down to the power supply. That's going to be in this area. So this, uh, I can't remember. I think I might be able to take it all out as one piece. I think if I take that screw out and we have this one. I'm trying to take the whole sub assembly out. I know after the top comes off, it's not a whole lot holding it in. Maybe that one. Now, this area. You probably could just bend this back to get the board out of the way, but it does plug into that DLP chip board, so rather than take a chance, let's just pop it out. Then we just have a couple wires. Got the color wheel. Unlatches it, pops out that one. And then we have some fans. More fans. And ballast control. Let's see, this feels pretty loose. Oh yeah, means I'll take the jack panel apart, that's good. There we go. There's the power supply. It goes in here, so we just push these tabs in. That connector should walk out, yep. Hmm. That was heat. Those capacitors look okay, so I, I doubt there's any problems with this assembly here. I'm going to put this over safe off to the side. This is where I think the problem is. In here. No bloated capacitors. That's good. Just going to have to pull this out and see if there's any burns under it. And to take that out, we have four screws in each corner. So one screw in each corner with a total of four screws. I take it back, there's five screws. One in each corner, and then there's another one next to the power plug down there comes out and then that bracket is loose now the power supply should come out I got the power supply out Move that bracket let's see if there's anything no eh, no burn marks it's a good sign and a bad sign it's a good sign because we don't want to see burn marks but a bad sign because it would explain what happened Let's disconnect the uh, 380 to the ballast. And then that is the switch. And this is a temperature sensor that kills all the power. We'll check that too. They have been known to go bad. Now, that ground wire goes to a screw underneath that heat sink, but I'm going to leave that because I'm not planning on having to take the whole 
power supply out yet. If I do, then we'll take the optic assembly out and remove it. First things first, let's check the switch. Alright, so switch is good. And let's check the temp sensor. That's good too. Hmm. Let's do some basic troubleshooting on this and let's see if the fuse is good. Let's see, the fuse is this guy right... Oops, sorry, you can't see that. Mm, the fuse has this round brown thing. There we go. Right there. That's the fuse. So let's check that for continuity. The fuse is good. So power should be getting in. That's a little worrisome because that means there might be something really wrong. As I said, none of the capacitors look bloated or anything like that. No evidence of leakage. I'm going to partially put this back in and then see what kind of voltages we have. Alright, yeah, this power supply has a problem. It's getting very low voltage. Let me get on the proper ground here. It's only going up to 150 volts. It should be going to 380. Then... When I check the uh, low voltage, we're getting nothing. So there's something wrong with that power supply. Now to figure out what. And there we go. I had to take the optic module out to remove the ground screw for the power supply. So here's the optic module of an HD20. The DLP chip is down in here. You can kind of see the edge of it a little bit. There's the color wheel. Color wheel's in good shape. It's actually not too bad. It needs a little bit of a cleaning, but it's not awful. So let me put this out of the way. This is where Part two will start. We're going to need to troubleshoot this power supply and figure out what's wrong. So as usual, like, rate, subscribe. Leave some comments below. And if you have any questions, let me know. Thanks for watching. Welcome to part two of repairing an Optima HD20 with no power. Part one, we took the entire assembly apart to remove the power supply because we determined there was no power getting up to the main board. I think I found the problem. What the cause is, I don't know, but I definitely found the problem. Let's see if I can get it so you guys can see it. But that uh, switching controller, it's an IC. It's exploded. <laughs> I have a feeling one of those little copper or uh, brass inserts that fell out ended up in here and shorted something out. Can't really see it though. Let me see if I can. There you go. There's a little bit better view. Yeah. You can see the schmutz on that capacitor. Yeah, that thing just shattered. So. Need to get in here and get this heat sink out of the way. I don't need to take that heat sink out. I found that I can get all the clearance I need. So, this awful rose solder, I will add some normal solder, real solder, so that we can remove it. It looks like the other components in the area are okay. Ah.
And there's the part right here. You can see where it exploded. Here's its legs, or the leftover legs that came loose. Looks like the die just vaporized. You don't even see where it used to be. Just a bunch of burnt silicone. Or silicon. So this needs replacement. It's a, uh, what do we got here? LM, LNK 38, 36, what is that? LNK 364 PN. I don't know if I have any of these, but I'm going to look around. All right, I don't have another the exact same. I have a uh, something to try here, an LNK 362 instead of the LNK 364. I'm going to look up the data sheet on this and see if I can use it. If it works, I'll get a new one of these. But this will allow me to test it without having to get a brand new one to see if it matters or not. I'd hate to buy some parts if I have some that will work fine for testing. So let me unsolder this and hook it up into here.